I hope everybody's good. We got better weather today, so um, that should be good. Today's practice, so we uh, we don't have any any changes in regards to anybody being out. Uh, all the same stuff that I've been giving you, uh, so that's good from yesterday. Back in today will be uh, Marquise Goodwin um, with his. He had like a foot contusion, so we're going to manage his reps, and that's what you're seeing with some of these guys like yesterday with Robert and Allen too. Uh, Allen had some hand, hamstring tightness. So he'll be back out there today. We'll manage kind of how we work through him. Um, and then Robert Quinn, same thing yesterday. Uh, he, he'll be back today. He just took some scheduled reps yesterday. And we're going to man, manage him again, you know. So I think that's part of the deal uh, for those guys. And um, I thought overall yesterday, number one, I want to compliment both teams for those defensive linemen, outside linebackers, inside linebackers. They were really – we were a little concerned. You know, you get concerned about getting around the quarterback. but. You can see Miami's done a great job of teaching their guys to, to be good with that. I thought they were great with that. Uh, and then same with our guys. I thought they did a good job there. Um, we stayed away from any of the, the bad stuff with the scuffles. So we got to get through one more day today. I compliment Coach uh, Flores and, and his staff for that. And we get, we're getting good reps. You know, we're able to get outside and get some good competition. You can see um, with what they're doing, uh, it's, it's nice to get some different looks. Uh, and. The beauty of that is that we're able to get the film and teach off of what we're seeing so that we can c continue to improve and, and let those guys uh, um, you know, have another chance today. And in what ways did you sense that their defense put some needed stress on you guys and, and, and challenged you yesterday? Yeah, I, I would just say I, I'm not going to get into any schematics of what they're doing. I don't think that's fair to them. But I, I do think the one thing you see, and, and anyone can look at the numbers, is they're a team that – that definitely stresses uh, offensive linemen and uh, and quarterbacks at times with some of the things they do schematically. And uh, we knew that, we were, were aware of that, and we actually like it because it just gives us some good things to work off of, not just with what we do schematically, but what our players do individually, you know, with, with techniques. So um, it's really good for us, and I think that's the beauty of kind of having this stuff happen. And I'm sure it was the same for them too, you know, on their side too, both sides. How did you feel like Andy and Justin handled what they saw yesterday. So I thought yesterday was a good day for, for those quarterbacks. Uh, and then when we got to the two minute, that's where I feel like um, that we were just OK. You know, we didn't get enough done. The situation was a minute 40 to go in the fourth quarter down two, need a field goal, one time out. And, uh, you know, you're at the minus 40 yard line. So you're in good shape. You should be able to get a field goal there. And we, we weren't real successful there. But again, we, we used it last night to teach off of. And I thought the quarterbacks did a good job at just trying to understand the situation. And, uh, you know, we won't have two minutes today. Today will be more red zone. So uh, we'll focus on that. But um, I thought that overall that they, again, it's their first time really rolling with it against a different team. Uh, I thought they did decent. It looked like, um, I guess it was kind of hard to see because we were on the other end of the field. But in that two minute you're talking about, I think you were close to field goal range with Justin. And then on third down, and maybe it was a sack. A sack. Yeah. Was that on him, or was it just the guy came off the edge? There wasn't much he could. Yeah, do? schematically, it was a little bit of both. Um, <clears throat> they brought some pressure, and it was just a communication with uh, with our line and him, just trying to get on the same page. So again, the nice thing is that they're he's not getting hit for that, and he gets to learn from that on tape. Hey, was there anything that happened yesterday that made a bigger impression on you because it wasn't against your own team, you know, because you were facing? Um, not really. Uh, we we uh, we had the team run on the front end, and I thought that that was good, especially for the guys that come off of just being sitting there for a little while and then, and then come back at it. I thought that I thought the team run on both sides was good, meaning our offense and, and defense. Um, you know, but nothing nothing too crazy. You know, nothing really that stood out. Yeah. With Justin. You want to see how he comes? Or will he play till halftime or longer? And is there any benefit to seeing how he comes out of halftime and performs for a drive? Or yeah, no, no, no. I would think um, uh, I would say that for Justin, you know, for sure past the halftime. I mean, unless there's, I hate to say anything's 100 percent, but the mindset going into it is that he's gonna he's gonna get a lot of reps. You know, does that take him into the fourth quarter? Maybe. You know, yeah, who, who knows? We'll see. But the more reps that we can get at him right now, the better. Uh, it's only going to help him. Uh, Folsey and I were talking yesterday, you know, if Nick was talking about his rookie year and how many how many reps he got as the backup. And there's just 
there's a rhythm to understanding what you're getting into. And like you just said, coming out of halftime, right? For him, it's going to be coming out to start the game and being on the sideline. Then going in and then getting to halftime, coming back out and playing with different guys. You know, that's the other thing of preseason. You're not always playing with the same guys. But so we just, we need to get as many reps as we can with him. Given your depth um, on the O-line, would the starters that you have, or the guys that you have starting on yeah. Saturday, are you tempted to keep them out there longer than that 8 to 10, just yeah. in part to protect Justin? Not just to protect Justin, but there's competition and they need it. So uh, we're going we're gonna to play. We're going to play our guys. That's why I say, like, I can't say the first, like, even for the O-line, I can't say the first team O-line because there might be one or two guys that come out, you know, and then we get the others in. But it's kind of going to be a, a little mixture of how we do it. But uh, we're, we're going to – the other part of that, too, is letting – as Justin comes in as the number two, is letting him have a chance to play with these guys on the front end, too. That's that, that's that part as well. Is Wilkinson a guy that you need to see more of on yeah. Saturday? Yeah, I think so. I would say so. You know, I, I – I, uh, I thought yesterday that he had a uh, you know pretty good day. I mean, there was he did some one on ones and he got beat there a little bit. But other than that, like in the team element, um, I think he coming back. You know, he he's he's very talented and he just needs more reps and just keep learning through Juan. But I would say, yeah, he needs to to get more reps and it would be good for us. And what's the, what's what's the biggest challenge for him of earning that spot, earning trust, and and just getting comfortable there? Um, I, so for him, it would be just eliminating the, the the big misses. You know, he's 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 a good football player, and then every now and then there'll be one that just kind of you know that that might get him, and he's learning from that. And and now's the time to do that. So if he can kind of minimize those, that everybody, the greatest tackles in the world have those. So just trying to reduce those and minimize them. Uh, he's the, he's a great kid, and he really wants to do well. Uh, he's very coachable. So that's all we can ask for, and now he's going to get an opportunity to see what we can do. Are you going to uh, try to get Justin some reps with first team skill players? Yeah, I would. I, um, some of the, it, it, that could happen. I mean, that's I would like to see that happen. Again, it just depends what happens on that first drive uh, with with Andy and, and some of those guys. And but I would say um, there's a good possibility that that could happen. Now there might be there might be a time where we put him in. Um, and it just so happens that a guy like Mooney isn't in there, but some of the others are, you know. But there might be one or two plays where Mooney is in. So it's just kind of a, it's a feel thing. This whole preseason is going to be a feel. You, you said the other day that you're, you're wrestling, especially I think with the quarterback, you were saying this about if you put a guy in there and he gets hurt, then everyone says, oh, you're a dummy. Yeah. If you don't play him, then they're like, how come you didn't get the reps? So how did you resolve that as far as putting planning to put Justin back there for extended time? Yeah, so the number one goal is to get him as many reps as we can. That's Justin. Okay, get him as many reps as we can. But then we as a staff have to be able to understand and feel like the way where the, the opponent we're playing, the matchups they have versus us, where that's at. Because we want to be smart. You know, we don't wanna we don't wanna get in a situation where any of these guys, not just Justin, are put at risk, you know, and um, that could be any position. So but when you look at the quarterback spot, there is that balance and we gotta be able to evaluate. The only way you can evaluate is by running stuff that you wanna run and it can't just be you know, uh, a certain scheme or play all the time where it gets, it's not fair to the offense. So I, I feel like with our coaches, we'll be able to do that and we can scheme some things up and, um, and give him a chance to, and then I just, I just want him to, all those guys, same with Andy, I want, I want him and Nick and Justin just go out and lead that offense and don't worry about making mistakes. That's going to happen. Uh, and just play football. And if you do that and you're the leader of that team and you score touchdowns, then we all, we all will be happy. And how much of that plan uh, with Justin or uh, is based on maybe what you learned over the last couple of years? I know there's nothing you do about last year's preseason not having it, but just, I guess, the year before that, not playing Mitch that year. Is that having any influence on this? Um, it's a little bit of a different situation because Mitchell was, you know, was the starter. Uh, but, no, I think that I kind of like the thought of being able to get him reps off of a feel. Uh, with the certain players that he's going to play at. But I wouldn't say any history is dictating what we're doing right now with him. I'd say it's more of uh, the plan that we want to use for this year. Yeah, I think the uh, fan excitement and expectations for Justin are probably going to ramp up from here as he gets on the field for the first time. I know he's been in the spotlight before, but just from getting to know him better, what tells you that he's ready for that? And do you guys try to insulate him from that at all? Uh, we try to insulate him. And just fo have him focus on that game plan that he gets, uh, making sure he's good with all that. 
some of the other distractions, we want to minimize it. But at the same point in time, what's real is real, is that there's going to be a lot of excitement out there for our team. And like you mentioned for, for Justin, when he goes out there, uh, that's his job. He's been on a big stage before. So uh, the beauty of that is that he knows how to handle that stuff. He's also uh, he's, he's very mature and focused. And when you have that, he doesn't let the moment, at least I, I don't think so, I haven't seen it, he doesn't let a moment get too big for him. He's very calm, very reserved. Um, and I think a lot of these guys, you know, it's like, okay, all this stuff that's been going on, all this talk, all these practices, all these meetings, all this stuff, can I just go play a football game and just go have fun? And it, let everything be real and let's just go play ball. He's probably at that point. Do you have to remind him, Matt, that, I mean, in college there's no preseason game. Yeah. You have to remind him that, hey, if you light it up, it's great, but it's still the preseason. If you stink, it's you know, okay. Yeah, it's not great, but it's still the preseason. Yeah. You have to kind of remind him of the importance of these exhibition games. For sure. Um, because of there's, there's not that consistency and that timing of the guys that you're with, the communication. That's not there. So that's a little bit of a challenge, and he knows that. And Coach Flip and Coach Laser will, will constantly let him know and explain to him to stay within the moment. Um, don't try to... Don't try to make too many big plays because none are being made, and don't don't uh, worry about if uh, you know if there's a bad play that happens. That's okay. That's why we're doing this. It's a learning process. It's about today. So, but again, a guy like Justin, where his level of maturity is at right now at this stage, you don't really worry about that too much because he, he's uh, he's pretty he's pretty locked in. Is there anybody that's not the top of the depth chart right now that kind of rose to the occasion yesterday, kind of jumped out at you in the joint practice? Uh, n nobody, nobody yesterday, not just from one practice that, that specifically jumped out to me. Um, but I think that in the preseason here, you'll get an opportunity to see those first couple quarters, some guys, and then the third and fourth, the depth. You'll see some guys I, that I hope that we know internally without putting names out there that we know that we're looking forward to. Okay. They've worked hard to get to this point. They've really put in the time they're growing. Can they do it on game day? Because one of the things that we noticed yesterday, we're going against our defense every day in practice. And the guys get in the groove, and they're doing what they're supposed to do. And all of a sudden, a team shows up yesterday and does, plays a technique a little different. And they throw our guys off a little bit. So using the wide receivers, for example, there might be somebody that ran a route um, different than the way they were running it versus our defense because it's new. And that different threw off the play. And so now, um, how, to us, we taught them last night, don't change what, what you were taught because they came here and played different. You adjust, stick to it, trust it, and it'll work. So stuff like that, we'll be able to really see that in a preseason game. Hey, Matt, you, you've spoken about the relative calm about the offensive line for the last few weeks and you know the philosophy that everything will work itself out. Where does that confidence come from? Like, Where's your kind of mindset on, on where it stands a month out from week one? Well, I would say this. Um, number one, just knowing with training camp, you're going to have stuff that comes up, which we've had with some of these guys, whether it's COVID or whether it's uh, you know the injuries with some of these offensive linemen. But generally, when you're in these meetings every day with these guys and you see them where they're at and the focus that they have and their, their want uh, to, to be good and to be great and the belief that they have in, in Juan and Donnie um, – and the belief that I have and our coaching staff have in them, you just know in the end, I mean, we went through it last year. And that's part of the reason, too, is like we, we went through, you know, musical chairs for a little while there at the offensive line. And it was hard, whether it was injuries or whether we just wanted somebody to play better. And, and then we ended up getting to a point where we found those five guys. And right now, you know, um, with a Fetty, a, a Fetty being out and Leno, you know, not being here anymore, Two of those guys aren't out there right now, but you still have Alex, you still have uh, Cody, and you still have Sam. So um, we just know that this is giving guys a chance, and we believe in Juan, we believe in them, and then we, schematically we got to help them out where need be. You know, so I just I really believe that um, is it a concern, and is it some, or not a concern? Is it a focus for us to know that we got to be better there and just keep trying to find that that starter at left tackle? Yeah. But at the same time, when Fetty's back out there and James Daniels is back out there and Cody's out there and Sam Musfer's out there and we get that tackle fixed, that's my calm. Matt, over the, the next 16, 17 days, what should the goal checklist look like for Riley Ridley in his bid to, to stick around? Both, I guess, offense and special teams. Stay consistent every day. Can't have bad days, right? 
Uh, so stay consistent, put together and stack consistently good days. Uh, do everything you possibly can on special teams. He's been, because his focus is phenomenal. He's always, his want is phenomenal. Uh, and he's really grown as a route runner. He ran a slant route yesterday uh, on the left side and, and made, a, made a great route, great play on third down. And so just keep putting those together because uh, I think he's really close. But again, that special teams will help him. Uh, but at the same time, he, he just continue to listen to Coach Furry and, and he'll be okay. Say that again? What does he brought to your staff into that D line room as a whole? Yeah, he's done a really good job at um, – he has a really unique way of connecting with those guys. I, I went in there last night. I walked in and sat in the D-line room with, with those guys and watched them, watched their one-on-ones. And I just listened to Coach Rump talk to them and teach them uh, in his own way of having fun but yet getting on them and teaching them uh, the techniques and fundamentals. And – what happens is, is again, you, 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 they don't, they didn't know him. A lot of these guys, none of them knew him. So it's his first year coming in. You got to earn that trust in your coach. If you don't trust your coach, it's hard. And I think he's really building relationships with all those guys. We got young guys, we got older guys. Um, you know, Pixie's stepping up and giving advice in the meeting, and I just see a positivity between them of uh, a connection. And I think they just, they believe in him. And so he's going to get on them now. Like if he doesn't, if he doesn't like what they're doing, he's going to tell them. He's not going to, you know, pull any punches, and I think they respect that. Thanks, Thanks, no problem.